two, both wonderful under gas. I have done the homework for everybody. Secondly, you want to make sure to double dip on the Novocaine. Nothing worse than a light smattering of Novocaine with the, oh, I got to go back to work. Fuck that. You're going to be on the couch for the rest of the day with my, fuck that. All right. Third, do you have sleep therapy? And that's, by the way, after I get gas and I get the Novocaine, then I want to know, can you put me under? Followed by fourth, can you fill my prescription of Percocet now? And can I get a couple before we start? Push that down, pull out your little flask. Oh, by the way, did I say to bring a flask? You want a quick shot of fireball before you get the process started. That's how I do it. What have you I don't done? know what I did. I don't know what they did to me. They put fillings in. Is that a thing? That's they, a they thing. Took... All right. So the first they used thing... to put lead in. They don't do that. I anymore. think that's what I have. I have silver. You do not have lead. What do I have? I have silver something in there. Yeah, I know. They do <laughs> this white. Is happening. They actually 19... do white shit now. Like your kids. It's got to be 1992, 1993, Lee. That's the last time I ever had work done in my mouth. I've been to the dentist. I just don't get shit done. I don't know. Um, they don't. I don't really have anything wrong. That my molars, they grew in perfect. Not even trying to brag. People, they're just like, we don't have to do anything to those. Those are fine. Um, yeah, so I'm good. But I had work done back then, right? So they t- they fucking shoot my mouth up, Lee, and I chewed off my tongue or my lip or some shit right at home, and they still had more work to do. And I told the dentist, I was like, look. I couldn't eat dinner last night. My lips all swollen. What are you guys doing? I said, how much does this stuff hurt? And he goes, well, I, you know, I don't know how much pain it is. It, it's pain, and this numbs you so that, you know, we, we do, it takes the pain away. We don't really More can't tell you a degree. Right. Ah. I said, well, can we start, and then if it hurts, I'll do the shot. And he goes, yes, we can do that. Man, they did two fillings that day. I had dinner. I'm telling you people that it's a fucking overrated procedure when they numb your mouth out. What the just fuck? man up. What, what are man you up. doing? It's legal drugs. You're such an <laughs> asshole. I chewed off my lip, bro. Oh, like, my dude. Oh. For one tooth, man. Ruined my whole freaking, the way I looked at school and shit. What happened to you? I had my tooth worked on. Why is your lip fucking swollen? I couldn't feel it. It just kept biting the thing. Assholes. All right, so here's the final results from Brian Campbell dentist. of CBS Sports, who I actually like a great deal, at B. Campbell CBS. His final recap on a night which wasn't uh, necessarily at his best against an exceptional opponent, unified heavyweight champion Anthony Joshua made sure to save the best for last. Here's the first thing I can tell you I like about Brian Campbell. He fucking read his article out loud. <laughs> Joshua, who now moves to 22 and 0 with 21 KOs, the sport's biggest star globally, broke open a surprisingly close fight against mandatory challenger Alexander Povetkin with a thrilling assault of power, punches to force a seventh round TKO at London's Wembley Stadium. Fighting in his hometown in front of 85,000 rabid fans, Joshua remained poised after being buckled in the opening rounds and overcame a bloody nose to showcase his continued improvement after winning his first world title two years ago in just his 16th pro fight. A few years ago, maybe I wouldn't have won that fight, but credit to my team for making my life easier, Joshua said. It's about developing. I'm in it to win it, and I'm in it to learn. But enough talking about my development. It's April 13th that I'm interested in here. The tougher the challenge, the harder the performance, the more you learn. This is chapter two. We are a different level now. I'm here to fight on my feet again. The 28-year-old Joshua who defended his WBA, WBO, IBF has all uh, already has Wembley Stadium booked for uh, April the 13th. Although... He mentioned amateur rival Dillian White, whom he knocked out professionally in 2015. Now, and let me tell you something, Lee, re- real fast. Yeah. Anthony Joshua put out a poll. Uh, Wilder, Fury, White, who do you want next? Three hundred Over 313,000 people responded. And I think only like it's like 2 or 3%. It's something really low right. came in for Dillian White. 
that's really going to backfire on them. But, no, that, I'll tell you why you take that fight if you can't get Deontay Wilder. It makes you the WBC number one in line. So he's going to be forced to fight Joshua, period. There's a logic to that. There's an immense amount of logic to the that. The winner, yes, the winner of that fight, I don't, Boxing is not going to do it again. They're not going to let these two, the winner of, of Wilder Fury, unless that's a controversial fight that they got to bring back for whatever reason, I do see Joshua and them meeting at the end of, what, 2019, would it be? Um, won't be in April. Of course it won't. It won't be in April. They're going to have one warm-up fight to promote the huge unification, but then that fight will get made. The Brian Campbell had the fight even uh, going into the sixth round with uh, Povetkin winning round one and two. See that? See rounds that? three and four going to Joshua. Round five going to Povetkin and round six. And obviously round seven, the closeout, going to Joshua. And thus ends the tale of Alexander Povetkin. I only and- disagree with the rounds. Uh, I think it was three and four that he had. Uh, or rounds four. One of those he gives the to Povetkin he shouldn't have, uh, in my opinion, on my scorecard. The other two were fine. The first two rounds, I'm telling you, he did have moments. He he was getting in. He was landing. It seemed like the speed. Joshua's just not that good defensively, Lee. I mean, you got to put it out there. The guy was almost knocked out by Klitschko, hit by Parker, and again, he was wobbled uh, by, by Povetkin. So... There's something there to that. That's, you know, Deontay Wilder needs to, he's going to be a live, live underdog in that fight because of this. Um, especially because Deontay will land that night. He throws <laughs> these punches from angles that the, the average boxer, these guys don't see. And I think they, every once in a while, they get in. They just get in, they hit you. And then the guy's got unbelievable power in both hands. So, um, that's what's scary about the Joshua Wilder matchup for Joshua now going into this. He, it, it's uh, he's had two fights since the Klitschko thing, and it's you don't see that much of an improvement. I don't know what the hell the guy was talking about because you got to remember Pivetkin was still on the the um, what what would you say going into his forties? What is he thirty nine or something like that? Yeah. Alexander Pivetkin, yeah, he's yeah. a little bit on the older side, so he's a lot so he, on the older side. He's a lot. I'm trying to be nice here, Lee. Come on. <laughs> if you're close to my age, you're a lot on the older side. <laughs> yeah, and he was landing. They said broken nose. Look, I don't know. They, I don't know if you read that. They they were talking about uh, Joshua might have broke his nose that night. I, you know, it was bleeding. He was getting hit. He was getting touched. But um, it was a power factor, man. Povetkin's not hurting him. And every time Joshua lands anything, it, it just looks like it takes a little of your soul every time. He's just that big. He's that fast. Uh, and I like his speed change up. He even does it with his hook. He has a natural left hook that comes almost perfect. And then he has like this lazy looping left hook. And then that's really going to frustrate fighters too. Um, he just has some flaws that, that uh, he get, he's going to get beat on by Tyson Fury. The only thing stopping Tyson Fury right now, uh, Lee, is ring rust. That's all we need to see. If Tyson Fury goes in there and dances 12 rounds around Deontay Wilder and Deontay can't touch him like Klitschko couldn't touch him and no one else, I'm, I'm telling you right now, he's going to beat Joshua too. And we kind of want Fury. Fury is not going to mess around. Fury will fight both of them guys and then probably rematch him again and still make the same amount of money and call us all dumb. It's just who Fury is. He's great for this sport. There you go. It's very He's great. He's great for the sport like Canelo. Huh? Huh? You see what they're going to decide is on that, Saturday, is that Is that what your segue is into? <laughs> Whatever you want to go. Go wherever you want to go. No, we can. We could talk about the replay and dick sucking of Canelo Alvarez, <laughs> which for those of you who actually watch the live broadcast like myself and then watch the replay, there were some added benefits to the replay, like even increased levels of of dick sucking for Canelo Alvarez. <laughs> I didn't think it was possible for them to jam their hands and head further up the ass of Canelo. In fact, if you were to test Lampley and Max Kellerman, <laughs> I am pretty sure that they're going to test positive for clembuterol. Damn it. 
That's like little Kim size amounts, Lee. Remember they pumped like ounces out of that girl. Poor thing. It took a lot to get to the top. See, I'm able to make you laugh on even a stressful <laughs> week. Yes, sir. Ah, did you watch the replay on HBO of the shit show? Of course I did, and they still the ass. Them. Wait, as I like to call it, the ass fucking of Triple G. <laughs> No, it's hey. not an ass fucking. It was close. Canelo changed his style. He was the aggressor. He was the ring general. Suck my dick. What happened Jeez. after round six when he lost all the rest of the rounds? <laughs> Jesus. So what you want me to believe is that he didn't win any of the first five. And then after round six, whenever he woke up, for whatever fucking reason, right? Whatever possessed him in round six to actually make him start fighting. Triple G is a man possessed. And fights like it in the second half of that fight. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree. Like I said, I, I still don't have the uh, Canelo winning the 12th and 9th round. I think that's where... I'll give it a draw. I'll be nice. Wrong. I'll give it a draw. And, and let me... And leave. And that's what they were avoiding. Look it. If you look at those two judges... Right, that gave because it. Triple G no longer wants to fight on HBO. Therefore, Canelo Alvarez... I love Oscar De La Hoya's open but letter. But wait, hear me, out, hear me out on this. If you guys look at the scorecards, if those men give the 12th round to Triple G, we have another draw. 115-113. Take one point away. Put it on the other card. It's a draw. 114-114 all over again, correct? Yeah. That's what they avoided, man. They, I, I, I know for a fact they were like, "Uh oh, shit, I have it a draw again." Oh fuck, I have it a draw, and they're like, "Nah, man, not this time, not not this time." And it goes to the guy who makes more. I'm telling, I don't know. It just Lee, that twelfth round is really hard to say. Canelo won it, and he's the challenger. He gets fired on as soon as the round starts. All right, tell me about my new impersonation. I'm going to try an Oscar De La Hoya. <laughs> eh, nope. eh, hi, Andrew. This is Oscar de la Hoya. And uh, I would like to read my letter to all the fight fans. Nice. How am I doing? Good letter. No, you're doing fine. It'll, it'll come out naturally as you go. Really? I don't Take think a so. Little bit of the TS, He's really the nasally, Latin. and Take he little, really yeah, sounds like a, a little like a Latin um, transsexual. Take yeah, a no, that, the... that's exactly right. But he also doesn't breathe through his nose. Like his nose is fucked up. Like, hi, this is Oscar De La Hoya. I like the Cholo Oscar. One day we got to get the Cholo. Yeah, like, hey, what's up, hey? Hey, what's up? Like, he's that fucking round, eh? Hey, when he's hey. walking out in Trinidad, he totally goes East LA. <laughs> that's so funny. Oscar is a cholo. Hey, if hey, you watch, we're going tagging that, later down in Boyle fight. Heights. He's like, "What the fuck, yeah, I didn't lose that round." <laughs> I was like, "Yes, there's the Oscar. I knew it. I knew it was somewhere in there." Dear fuck, fight yeah. fans from Oscar De La Hoya, dear fight fans, if you've not heard this letter, if you've not seen this letter, it has been reposted on our site. But I am happy to read it here because we haven't talked about it. Dear fight fans, on this past Saturday night, September the fifteenth, fans were. Set to be treated to what sports should be all about. To the two best athletes in a sport squaring off against each other with the winner earning the title of the best in the business. Nothing like a run-on sentence there. Sounded right? better as an Oscar voice. Hey, I'll tell you no, no, that kind of event <laughs> no, not was no, no. fucking awesome, man. There you go. Yes. What is he, Cheech Marin? <laughs> Just watch. Hey, I'm telling you, it's there. The evidence is there. Not that only damn did guy, the fight lying. itself deliver all <laughs> that was promised against hey, all kinds of pressure, ever, Canelo you, Alvarez you guys, gave the performance you, of his life, buddy. You guys don't know this, but every morning Oscar has to wake up and put makeup on the middle of his thumb and finger on the oh, cross shit. with the three lines. <laughs> Uh, unfairly criticizing for not fighting Mexican enough hey. in the first fight. He kept Gennady Golovkin on his heels all night, taking the action to the boogeyman of boxing, walking him down and controlling the pace. Now, I will agree that that was a very logical change to a very aggressive fighter. The only We were talking about this in the gym the other day. The only way to stop a hyper-aggressive fighter like a Mike Tyson or a Triple G, 
is to come at them. The problem that Canelo, of course, encountered, by the way, for anybody who...